Okay, welcome back to Space Arena, the Ultimate Python Turtle Graphics Game Tutorial Part 13. In this part, we're going to go ahead and set up the camera movement. We're going to keep it simple for now. We're going to have the camera centered on the player. So let me show you kind of what I have in mind here. Um, this is what we currently have. Now when the player moves, nothing else moves. So everything is moving independently. But the camera, for lack of a better term, is focused on this spot. What we want to happen is we want the camera to be focused on the player. So the player is always going to be in the center. Okay, at least for now. We'll keep it simple. So if the player moves up, then relative everything moves down. Okay, so the player stays in the center, but everything else moves relative to the player. And it's uh, actually pretty easy to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a class here, I should say, because later we want to make it a little bit more fancy. But for now, let's just keep it simple. So here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and create a class. And I'm going to call it camera. Okay. Now the camera is not a sprite. Okay. It is its own type of object. And when we initialize it, we're going to give it an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So I'm going to say self.x equals x, self.y equals y. Now, as I mentioned before, it's going to be centered on the player. So we're going to need to pass the player's x and y coordinate. Now, right now, we know that x and y coordinate is, of course, a 0, 0. But that could change at some point. And then we're also going to need an update method. Update. update. And... I want to say x offset and y. Well, let's just call this let's just call this uh, x and y. So that's not going to matter here. And then also we'll say again self dot x equals x, self dot y equals y. Okay. And every time we update it, basically it's going to go where the player is, okay? Because the player is going to be moving relative to everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to my main loop. I'm just going to go ahead and put uh, camera update here. So update the camera. And I could put it up above. I just put it down here. So camera.update. And it needs a new XY. You can see that here. It pops up. And that XY is going to come from the player X and the player Y. Okay, now, I'm going to run this just to see if it's compiling and if it's working. There's no errors. Okay, there's an error. Lovely. Camera is not defined. Okay, oops. Um, so I need to go ahead and create that. I'm just going to go ahead and create the camera. Actually, I got to do it after the player because we need to tell it where the player is. So I'm going to say create camera. Say camera equals uh, camera. And it's going to be player.x and player.y. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that again. Okay, so it's running. Now, of course, it's not doing anything, but what we need to do is when we render every object, we have to render that object relative to the player, which is the camera X and Y. Okay, so if, I, if the player is moving to the right, its X is increasing. So that means everybody else's X should decrease. It's kind of... I know you're probably a little confused. So I'm going to go up to my sprite class. And unfortunately, I have to do this in every one of my update methods. I also have to do it for the border, but we'll do that one last. So where we have render, we now have to do an x offset and a y offset. And then when we say pen.go to, we subtract the x offset and we subtract the y offset. We could call this camera offset, doesn't doesn't really matter I guess, but uh, I just call it x and y offset, it makes a little more sense to me. Same thing with the health meter, if we render the health meter, we're going to need this for, we're going to need this basically for every render method. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And there's probably a better way I could have done this, but this is, this is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to put minus x offset, and I'm going to put, same thing, minus y offset. So everything else stays the same. We just add add or in this case subtract the offset. And I think that should be that for that. Player, 
player. Now we don't have to, I guess we do have to worry about the player as well. Um, update self. And again, we're gonna do an X offset and a Y offset. And same thing, that's update. We don't need that update, sorry. We need that in render, my apologies. And in render. Same thing where we have go to, we're gonna put minus X offset and minus y offset so you can see the pattern now um, missile where we have missile render yep same thing here and offset and yeah, I'm just going down through and putting it everywhere it needs to be and we'll, like I said, we'll do the border last just to make it easier to make sure this works and notice how the enemy is just being rendered through the regular sprite rendering so we can leave that as it is and same thing with power up okay so now when we do our sprite rendering we need to put camera dot x camera dot y now for now this is exactly the same as the player x and player y we could have just done this with a player but i know later we want to change this so i'm just going to do it this way for now okay so let's go ahead and test that and see what happens Okay, got an error. All right, health meter missing two required positional arguments. Okay, so that is line 245. 245, render. Ah, okay. Ah, 405. Mm, let's see. We've got pen, x offset, y offset, okay. And 245. Ah, there we go. X offset and Y offset. Miss that. Let's try that again. Okay, health meter pen, 159. Same problem. 159. Okay, comma, X offset, Y offset. Go ahead and run it. And it'll just tell us where. Now, watch what I do here. I'm going to move. And did you see that? See how the players moved away from me. Okay, now it's weird because I think I got this working right. <laughs> because the border's not moving, it's looking a little weird. So let's go ahead and fix the border. Um, where is the border rendering? I have to put that in game. Render border, there we go. Um, so again, I'm going to have to put X offset, Y offset, and so left, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put, left and right are both gonna be minus X offset, minus, and again, it's minus because we're moving in the opposite direction of the player. And top is gonna be minus Y offset, and minus y offset. Let's go ahead and try that, see if that works. Fudge. Um, yeah. Game.render border pen 407. And this is something that, like, because of the way we're doing it, we can actually have it set up so that it follows an enemy, or we can have it follow the missile when it fires. It's, that's what makes it kind of cool. Um, but it makes more sense, of course, to have it follow the player. Um, so this is going to be camera.x and camera.y. Okay, so let's try that again. Okay, so now I'm going to move. And notice how the border is moving. And then I bounce off the border. Okay, because, again, if you remember, the, the point of this game was to have a larger arena than the size of the screen. Okay, oops. So you see how when I bounce, everything bounces relative to the player. That gives it a bit more of an interesting, I think, feel to the game. And, again, the, you start to feel the physics a little bit more uh, of how that's working. And yeah, so that's it. So I'm gonna keep it at this size for now, I guess. But we could, well, it's just, just for fun. Let's go ahead and just make it big to see what that looks like. And where did I do that at? Yeah, so we said 700 by 500. So let's go ahead and make that 1400 by 1000. And if I go ahead and run that, now we can't see the border because it's off screen, but if I go this way and I get to the border, and now you can see how the playing field is now bigger than the display field.
which is which is a pretty cool effect. And it only took just a, a real little bit of code to do that. There's just a simple offset. And you notice how this is still staying in the exact middle of the screen for display purposes, but it's moving within the larger game world, which is which is pretty funky. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back to 700 just for testing until we get that sorted out, until we get everything else sorted out. Just leave it like that, okay? So, quick review. We have a camera class that is initially set to the location of the, well, wherever we want the camera to be. We could set it elsewhere. And in the update method, what we're doing is we're just putting it wherever the player is. So the camera will follow the player. Later, we'll have the, the camera trail the player and it gets a little bit more elastic, which is pretty cool. And that should be 500, not 500, yes. And then we created the camera, again, set it to the player's X and Y coordinates. And when we update everything, or when we render everything, we have to send the camera X and Y, and that includes the border, and that is subtracted from the normal coordinates, and that gives us the relative coordinates. And then again, we have to update the camera with the player's X and Y coordinates there as well. Okay, stay tuned for more. Keep on coding.